And I believe we are live. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Virtual Coffee. I'm Cheryl Leong from the Growth Hub, and we have David Jennings from Systems Hub today. How are you, David? Fantastic. I got appreciate your, got your little nice. caffeine hit. That's, yes. mine. That's mine there. Sometimes I sneak a little bit of non-caffeine in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> no one needs to know. But we we are talking about something which I find extremely cool, which is systemizing. And it's more so not, not just the systemizing, but what systemization does for business owners to create the level of freedom in our lives. But before we go into that, David, love to have a little bit of a chat about your sort of background and how you got into this space of really creating this, you know, product and niche and idea mm. around systemization because your background has been in, in marketing yeah I think I've been a business owner and entrepreneur since I left school and been involved in a lot of things and all of the different business ventures I have had always had some level of systems and processes built into it I uh, used to work in the stock market education space, and that was about designing trading systems. You would write out your entry signals, exit signals, your position sizing, and you'd think about all of this upfront so that your emotions wouldn't get involved when you were trading the market and you would really just follow the plan. And then um, we also owned a rock and roll clothing music store called Planet 13. And awesome. we we franchised uh, one of the stores. So we went down and did all the documentation uh, with like the, the store manuals. And we recruited someone who ran that store and uh, we'd franchise that business. So again, uh, franchising is heavily involved with systems. Mm. Uh, it was strange though, when I got to the digital agency, that was the business where I had all this baggage around oh, I can't systemize this business. This business is different because it's a digital agency. Things are always changing on Google. If I write a system, it's going to very quickly become out of date. I thought um, I, we were a creative digital agency, so I didn't want to put systems in place and remove all the creativity. And I thought I was going to need hundreds of systems because there are so many little micro components to digital marketing. And it, it meant that I actually got trapped in that business for about 10 years uh, mm. where I was just very much the bottleneck in the business. Uh, and that was probably, it was strange because I felt like I, I already knew how important business systems are and I knew the freedom that they bring to the business owner and the ability to, to make choices where they might previously not be able to make those. Um, yet for some reason, I, I just didn't do it for the longest of times. And that's interesting. Do you think because, like you said, because it was a creative agency that it was going to stem creativity and ability to be uh, versatile? Mm, well, there ended up being a range of reasons. That, that was definitely one of them. I thought I needed to be the one that would have to create all the systems and the processes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I was already busy, so I didn't have time to document or capture the way that I was doing something, let alone delegate it to someone and then oversee them and make sure that they do it to the right standard. And I wanted to get it just right and perfect. And I just, yeah, for whatever reason, I thought that business was different. And then I thought maybe this business can't be systemized. Um, in hindsight, I, I know that I was able to systemize myself out of the role. We hired a CEO. She ran that business for three years. Uh, and then she had a change in her, her personal life, which meant she had to resign. And then I ultimately sold that business. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't have had that option to, one, step out of the business or two, even sell the business if it wasn't systemized. The reason we got such great um, like final figure when, when we exited the business was because the business was run and it wasn't dependent on me and I wasn't in the operations, the, the person who bought the business said, I bought it for two reasons. One, the systems and two, the financial performance. So yeah. that's yeah. what made me go, this is a big problem that a lot of business owners have. And everybody seems to agree that business systems are important, yet so many business owners don't have them in place and they go, oh, I've tried to systemize in the past. It didn't work for me. I'm not a systems person. And then they just stop. Um, and and that, that's what sort of really sent me on the work that I do now, which started with System Hub. 
but it's it's very much evolved now. Um, the bulk of my work is in what I call systemology, which is the system for systemizing a business. Yeah, and and you're so on point in terms of what you're saying there. When 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 someone's looking at your business and potentially to to acquire, I guess a lot of people, you know, um, I'd say for small businesses or people that's starting in business, they sort of go, well, first of all they might not have a clear exit plan and that's okay. But it is that concept of going, well, you know, when I'm speaking to my accountant, they're like, what's your long-term plan for this business? Right? And I go, oh, okay, it's this, this, and this. And, you know, for us, it's eventually getting to that point where we've got a CEO as well. And they go, okay, how are your systems and processes? And that's one of the first things they're going to look at because they're like, all right, well, that's what they are look at. And then they're going to look at the valuation, which is exactly what you've you've said there. But even for businesses who may not have an exit plan, but mm-hmm. a lot of us go into business finding a level, looking for freedom, right? Freedom of choice, freedom to be able to create this lifestyle. We've got these images of, you know, sipping pina coladas and I was going to say Bali, but not anymore, um, <laughs> on a nice beach somewhere in Australia. Um, but to do that, you need to be able to remove yourself away from the day to day. Yeah, definitely a few things. I never had any intentions of selling the digital agency. I got that business to a point where it was generating a quarterly profit for me and the input that I needed to give was quite minimal. I was chatting with the CEO. I chat with her about once a month. We made sure that we were good, strategically aligned and talked about the next couple of steps and then she would manage it. So I just thought, hey, that's a cash flow business mm. that I'm going to mm. park. Uh, it wasn't until she had to fly back to the States because all of her family's over there. And when she came back, she resigned. And I thought in my head, I can, A, I'm going to get pulled back into the business or mm. B, even if I recruited someone to replace her, it's still going to take time to train them up and get them to where they need to be. So um, it's going to pull me back into the business. And I'd lost the passion for that business. My kind of heart had moved on and it didn't light me up like it once did. So uh, what it gave me is an option. So a business owner might not even consider selling, but you don't know what's around the corner. What happens if there's a change in your personal circumstances, something happens to you and you can't work, something happens to a family member and you have to attend to them and not be involved in the business you need to make sure that you've got as many options as possible and the systems really create the options. So that's probably one of the biggest things. And when people start business as well, you're right. They start thinking, I want to start a business for freedom, but then when they actually get into it and they realize how dependent the business is on them, they have anything but freedom. They're the ones chatting with the leads and selling them. They're the ones that are helping to onboarding the clients. They're the ones that are answering the questions of the team members if they have trouble. Like they build this business where everything just depends on them. And and that's okay when you're getting a business off the ground and you have to do that and you hustle and you do whatever you you need to to get the business off the ground, but don't stay there. You mm-hmm. like if you're in that position and you find you're kind of moving sideways and it's been more than a you know two or three years, then you're in that hustle mode too long. A mm-hmm. business only needs a couple of years to get to that point, but then you need to start to change that approach because that will trap you, as it did for me in the digital agency. I got trapped. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's uh, another critical point there where, I mean, for any new business owner, obviously the big focus at the start is going to be sales and hopefully sales and marketing, sales and marketing, so you can get you know money in the door. But it will get to a point where you go, well, do I need to be the only person doing the sales and marketing um, yeah. before? And so how do you, I mean, business owners are busy enough as it is, you know, you mm. and I know this. How do we guide them to be able to take a breather and and have a bit of a stock take to be able to say I need to put aside some time I mean like you said you know they, they sort of go I just don't have time yeah I just don't have time how do you work work through with them so systemology which is uh which is my book it kind of goes through these seven stages um the, the first stage is around identifying the minimum number of systems required for the business to deliver the core product or service. So you have to get clear on who the target audience is and what's the primary product or service that you sell to that audience 
that is the perfect starting point for working with you in your business. Once you identify that, what you need to do is you map a, um, we call it the critical client flow, but it's the linear journey that the client and the business goes through to deliver that product or service. All of this is done on just an A4 bit of paper. You start at the top and you go, how do I get people's attention? How do I handle an incoming inquiry? How do I qualify them? How do I sell them? How do I collect some money? How do I onboard them? How do I deliver the product or service? And how do I get them to come back? Now, each one of those is a, a box. That box isn't, you know, doesn't have more than one or two words in it. It looks a little bit, if they're watching the video, it's oh, this one over here. It's kind of a bit, a bit hard to see. Um, but uh, what that does is it says these are the parts of the business. If we can systemize that, we basically systemize how the business makes money. Hmm. And uh, that's where you really want to start. So that first step, and it's a you know 20 minute exercise for the business owner to figure out those 10 to 15 systems. Then the next step is you start to think about where is the knowledge in the team? Who knows how to do each one of those steps? Preferably without the business owner. Like if there's someone who answers the phone or handles an inquiry, well, let's put their name down next to that step. And then the step after that is then we actually extract and capture what they're doing. Uh, this is one of the differences for systemology. Systemology is not about process improvement. It's about capturing what you're currently doing and making that, you know, here's mm. the best practice and bringing everybody up to that level. That's mm -hmm. the baseline. And doing that means we can actually take the business owner out of the equation because the business owner feels like if they want to get this just right and they want to have the perfect system, they need to be involved in it. Mm. But if you're just capturing what you're already doing, and bringing everybody up to that standard, it makes it much easier to then uh, get other team members to really drive it and, and recognize that the business owner doesn't need to be one, the one doing the documentation. There's, there's usually two people. There's the knowledgeable worker who knows how to do it. And then there is the, uh, the documenter who, or the systems champion who works with the, that knowledgeable worker to record what they're doing, extract it, and then get the key steps. And that kind of forms the first level or the, the basis of your first set of systems. So yeah. it's just a little bit of rewiring in, in your brain. Some people, if they have this baggage of what they think a business system is, I want them to retest some of these assumptions. If you think, ah, oh, I'm not a systems person. Mm. Um, that doesn't mean you can't run a systems driven business. That doesn't mean you can't have other people on the team that are systems people that can really help to drive it. Um, and, and I think testing some of these faulty assumptions can, can get you back on the path. Yeah. And you mentioned a few times as well, David, like team. And so you know, for a lot of business owners, again, stepping into it, they're not necessarily thinking I'm going to be growing a team. But I guess this is the point about having some level of freedom for your business is to consider whether you need, do need a team to be able to support you in those systems and processes as so well. When you first get started, you see a problem or you create a product or service that your clients are going to end up um, sort of purchasing. You'll get it off the ground. You'll be hustling as the business owner. You'll be making sure you've got the right product to market fit. You'll be making sure that you can sell it and deliver the product and make sure that they're happy and get them to refer friends and family and to come back. That's all of that startup phase. Once that's proven, then you kind of need to move into that next level, which is, okay, now how can I do that consistently without key person dependency? Because at the moment, all of that depends on you as the business owner. And if something happens to you, then the business just crumbles. So it's not really a business. It's more like a job mm -hmm. because uh, you are required to replace that time for money. But as you grow and you evolve it into the business, you're right. You start to break pieces of that off. You start to get team members that have responsibility for certain parts of that critical client flow. You might have someone whose job it is to look after the 
you know, getting people's attention, the marketing. You might have someone who's responsible. Maybe, who knows, maybe you as the business owner then start to go, okay, well, I'm going to handle the sales. Okay, well, then maybe you build up the team to help with the delivery. Or maybe you get the salesperson so you can focus on the delivery. But what obviously happens, there's limited time in the day. If it's just you and you're maxed out, you'll you'll just hit this glass ceiling and you'll move sideways. There's, you just can't break through that. Um, you can try and raise your prices a little bit, but even that will have its limits. You, you need to start to bring in the team, uh, which then enables you to actually take on more work, which means the business can grow and scale. Yeah, and, and I like what you've mentioned about being able to think about the different functions in the business where you're going, all right, well, even though you might be that one, you know, a solopreneur now is start to think in a business way. I'm a solopreneur, but I am doing all these functions, sales, marketing, operations, and everything else. But make that decision probably early on when you're starting to grow to go, which, which function do I want to be able to then have a team member look after and then create a system around? So is it better, so that's a question, is it better to create that system to begin with or have someone in the team first and then create it with them? Uh, generally speaking, documenting systems and processes, uh, the best time to do it is once you've got a few team members that you're working with, whether that's part-time, full-time, whether that's contractors, but just other people that you're working with. Because the biggest issue is that Oftentimes the business owner isn't a systems person. They don't like writing systems and processes. They're more of a, you know, a visionary creative type person. They're not a detail orientated operations manager. So we don't want to try and really squish a square peg into a round hole. If it's just you and it's your solopreneur, there are probably other things that you should be focusing your time on, making sure you've got the right product to market fit, getting out there and selling and doing the work. That's all of what happens at that solopreneur. Then you start to get some assistants who help you out. Once you've got some team members, you know, initially you might create some real basic checklists, but you don't want to create any detailed systems and processes until you've really got a little bit of that traction yeah. and, you start to see your business as a collection of systems. Like the, the business is one big system, but then there are subsystems. And the subsystems, just like you talked about, are really the departments, sales, marketing, HR, um, operations, management, finance. They're kind of your different departments. Now, what you're looking for in the early days is the 80-20. What is the 20% of the systems in each of those different departments that delivers 80% of the result? And you just document just those first. So you start off with the critical client flow, but then you kind of think about the other departments as well. Because ultimately, as you bring a team member in, you want to assign responsibility mm. and say, hey, you are the finance person. Here are the five things that need to happen in this department. I need you to make sure that we issue out invoices, that you pay our bills, and then you've got everything prepared for the accountant to do the BAS every quarter or whatever it is. You figure out what those handful of things are uh, and then you make someone responsible for those. That's mm. part of that process of transitioning the business owner out. Yeah, yeah. And so let's talk about how do we create effective systems sort of your top top three pointers if you yeah can. easiest thing to do um is to just capture what you're currently doing mm -hmm. not what you would like to be doing record it as it's happening in the moment so hop on zoom or get your iphone out and record you when you're doing the thing or have the knowledge of a worker um, have a system for creating systems. Like again, in the systemology book, we give you a, a template for that. Mm -hmm. um, that way you have a way in which you do it. Uh, I prefer, personally, not everybody's the same, but I prefer to start with video and then create the documentation. I just find if you get that workflow right, it's easier. Don't, um, don't overcomplicate it initially. Just think, you know, what are the key steps? Over time, you can add detail in. Don't 
put too many screenshots in or mm. do fancy workflows or anything that gets in the way of, oh, if I need to make a change now, that's going to be a little bit harder. You just want to keep it very simple so that it can change. Like I, I remember, um, you know, when I, I talk to businesses and I say, what's the first business that comes to mind when they think about a systemized business? Oftentimes McDonald's is the first one that comes to mind. And people think that their business needs to be systemized like McDonald's. Mm. But McDonald's has been doing systems for 60 years. So they've got systems for everything and they're super, super micro detailed. But that's not helpful for someone just starting out to systemize like that. What you need to do is you hire the movie, The Founder, which is the you know Ray Kroc <laughs> McDonald's story. And they look at the start of that movie when Ray is first figuring out the system for the store. They go out onto a basketball court, they get some chalk out and they map out the store and they say, oh, let's put the fryer here. Oh, maybe we should put the drinks machine over near the drive through Oh, where are the registers going to go? And they move stuff around. That's the way that first generation systems look. Mm. So try and keep it a little bit more raw uh, at the start. And, and what you're really looking at doing, the real key to have this happen is you're actually looking to create a culture of systems inside the organization. You don't want this to be any one person's responsibility. Everybody needs to be involved in the process of capturing systems and improving them and looking towards the systems because it's something that will happen over time. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the other thing I would suggest is um, how can you build a culture of systems into the business um, yeah and that i think that's a that's extremely good point that it's a constant reminder that it's anything that you're doing that's re repetitive or repeatable mm -hmm. um we as as business owners need to work out how do we document this and take a pause in what we're doing because it's like i said it may uh, um it may seem like two steps backwards when you're having to take that time, but then it's 10 steps forward because someone else can take over. Yeah. And sometimes a little bit counterintuitive. Some people try and start to systemize the complex stuff first. I would suggest just as you're getting started, uh, systemize the simple stuff where you're not adding much value, organizing a calendar request, issuing out an invoice, chasing up someone who hasn't paid, uh, basic admin type work. Like starting off with those types of systems and working with a virtual assistant and uh, getting them to create some of that work just gives you that little bit of extra space. So then you can start to focus on higher value tasks that only you can solve. That's the real key. The business owner, they are great problem solvers. Mm. They just need to be working on the highest quality problems, not solving the same problem again and again and again and again that's that's when it's um uh, you get trapped yeah and it's not pr productive so really um started to start to to wrap wrap things up david what is systems hub and then tell us about systemology as well yeah so system hub is it's a place to store businesses systems and processes so we used to do it in a dropbox folder and we tried google drive and we just had like a an unorganized folder full of Word documents that mm. Mm. had version control issues and a lot of challenges. So we said, this isn't working. We want to build a culture of systems in our business. So let's build a platform purpose designed to house all of these systems and processes. Mm. So it's specifically for small business systems and processes, having all of that in one location with email templates and videos that you can attach and embedding rich media and easily organizable and searchable specifically designed for systems that the whole team can easily and intuitively use. So that's what System Hub is. Whereas Systemology, System Hub came first and I just found that uh, I started to go, what is the difference between those businesses that make System Hub work and those that don't? And the, those that don't, a lot of people go, yeah, look, I know systems and processes are important, but I just don't know where to start. I don't know how. So systemology is kind of like the education piece. It's the training. It says, 
this is how we start. We start off with the critical client flow. We think about where the knowledge is. We extract it out of their brain. We think about how that's organized. We talk about how to get the team involved. Um, so it's a seven step process that it started off um, as a book, uh, which is systemology, um, has the foreword by Michael Gerber. Uh, but now it's evolved into a lot more than that. We've got sort of some training and we certify um, business coaches and consultants in okay. systemology. So we have systemologists, we call them, and that they can help guide businesses uh, through this process and, and getting systemology working in their business. Good to know. And a lot of business owners sort of go, yeah, I, need, I, I know it's you know something that I need. I have no idea the questions to ask or even where to start. Yeah, it's, just, it's a whole thing. So you've got consultants and coaches that can that can guide them through that process. Exactly. Excellent. Excellent. Um, About to sneeze. I, I was like, eh. there we go. Okay. Bless you. Bless you, Dave. Yeah. So um, anyone that's interested to find out about System Hub or Systemology, where can they go, David? Best place is definitely systemology.com. You can find out about the book or head over to Amazon. If you're watching this, you might be an audio person. There is an audible version as well. Just starting with the book. That's probably the best place to start. The, the book introduces some of the challenges that the business owner has and then gives you some really clear action steps. It's almost like it's the how-to guide for the e-myth. So Michael Gerber wrote a great book called The E-Myth, a very well-recognized it, it just doesn't cover the, well, how do I do it? It covers more the why should I do it? And systemology is more the why uh, or, or rather the, the how is that done? Yeah. And then if you need to go from the how to how do I then execute it, then... then yeah, you if you need some it. extra help, we have, um, you know, whether it's a systemologist or an online program, we've got a few options. Excellent. Um, one thing I really like about System Hub as well is there's so many templates that are in there already. Yeah, big big part of what I've realised in business is a lot of the problems that business owners have have been solved before, mm. and there are a lot of systems and processes that industry experts have already created. So we've partnered with a lot of people like Mike McCallowitz and John Warillo and Michael Gerber and um, Vern Harnish around the scaling up stuff and um, some finance people. We just developed a whole, like working with them, we captured some of their best systems and processes oh, and awesome. then yes. their templates that we, we offer to System Hub subscribers. Excellent. So anyone that's, that's here thinking, oh my goodness, I really need to get my systems game on um, hop over to systemology and also system hub as well if you need some way to be able to document your processes and systems but don't necessarily need to start from scratch they've got a whole lot of templates and resources to help you through that perfect excellent thank you so much david that was fantastic a bit of a caffeine hit there and again a reminder for us for me and we've got a team so to be able to leverage that and go okay how are our systems looking as yeah. well yeah. Um, hopefully, I mean, the, the whole purpose of, of this was to light the fire again inside mm -hmm. the business owner to go, hey, even though I might have tried systems in the past and failed, or maybe I think I'm not a systems person, I, I would just suggest giving it another look because it's something that's so important to business. Absolutely. And there are better ways of doing it that aren't so dependent on you. And you can have a systemized business, even if you don't see yourself as a systems person. Yeah. And then when the borders open, you may be able to take an actual holiday. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> Great. Thanks, David. Have a fantastic uh, um, morning and afternoon, and I'll see you around. Take care. Thanks ciao, for having ciao. Bye-bye.